Hello everyone, today we will look into analyzing some game design related things like XP tables. So how much experience is needed to level up your character or whatever is in your game and how I approach game design in this regard. There's a small disclaimer, I'm not a game designer, I'm a software engineer. There might be better sources to get your information from, but this video should get you started, at least. Let's analyze, I'm currently playing New World, and let's analyze the XP table. So on the left side we see the level, in A and B we see the experience needed to level up to the next level and in C we see the total experience that you have gained through the game till you reached max level. And the, the other ones we, we can ignore for now. And when we take the, the um, experience needed or the total experience, there shouldn't be much difference in the graph. Oh, here's the experience increase, then it looks kind of wonky here and there, but it kind of looks linear exponentially, a mix. But if we look at total experience, then you clearly can see this, that this is a sort of exponentially curve. The interesting thing is when you do x2, which is just uh, taking the level, which the player wants to achieve, multiplied by itself, then you get a pretty identical curve. So this is pretty much an exponential curve. Then what I wanted to calculate is um, y multiplied with x2, where x is the, the level the player wants to reach. So for for the first line x is 2, then we want to calculate y multiplied by x ex exponential 2 equals to 150, because 150 is the xp the player needs. And if you if you move that around if you if you do some math let's let's do that together then you will find out that x exponential 2 is actually solved quite easy because it's just basically what we calculated here in the s curve the level the player wants to reach or the level the player has multiplied by itself so this is actually a a solved value which is in our case 4 and then we have a very simple equation y is multiplied by 4 equals to 150 and you can move that around if you divide by both sides with 4 then you get y on the left side and divide it by 4 and what what we reach when we do that which is basically getting the 150 and divided it by, by 4, which is the exponential here in the S, we get a value. This is just one thing you can try to find out um, if, if the value doesn't, for example, move around a, a certain value. Um, it, it's just one way of analyzing a curve. There, there are different ways and there are way better mathematicians out there than me but this is one thing I tend to do and basically what I want to say now to as again as a small disclaimer these values mean nothing on their own because you can need a uh, 150,000 instead of 150 XP to level up but if a monster or a quest gives you 10 level ups at, the, at your level, then it doesn't matter how big the value is. But 
we try to analyze how the end curve or in which curve the game designer balance the, this game but the value itself is is not interesting in itself because it always needs to get compared to how long does the player need to actually gain this much experience points with his level and everything but let's analyze the curve a little bit with, with the form that I just just did and if we do that then we get this curve and it's interesting that this curve pretty much goes around 32 so if you want to balance the the XP table for for example for new world then you can do take an exponential curve and your basically default value could be 32 for for the y axis uh, for the y value of y multiplied with x exponential 2 and if you do that then you can say you can configure which levels might be harder or easier to to achieve this also means that getting xp killing monsters and everything has to scale the same way which i can say in new world they don't so it's so when it goes down here it might actually still take longer to to get the level up because you you get less xp in the experience gaining curve doesn't scale as much as the the experience needed curve but still in new world it's quite interesting with level 25 um, you get the first instance available which gives you quite a lot of xp if you do that so it actually makes sense that they increase it here a little bit because you have some new things to do and if they didn't increase the experience needed people might not even consider doing the 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 dungeon because they don't need to they can do what they have done before to just easily level up so it's it's a good idea to to maybe increase increase the issue a little bit to to sell the solution this is basically what, what this game here does there's another thing which is um as you can see the early levels are way easier to achieve than the later ones which totally makes sense the reason for that why you want to do that in your game is you want to first hook the player till till you let him suffer basically so in the early games it's really good to give the player some level ups give them some dopamine shots they they like your game it's very rewarding for them to play your game and later in the game you you might want to take that a little bit away from the player and this way they 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 swipe through that dopamine shot to to the satisfaction to getting a level up and that's basically what pretty much every game does and how it works so it makes sense to make the the early levels quite easy which they have done um at the very start it, it's a little bit more because in this game when you walk around the map and everything and you discover things you get a lot of xp so at the beginning where everything is undiscovered for you 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 get a lot of xp um early on so that they they could make this uh, a little bit harder at the beginning and then then they balance it down to to make it easier for the player to get started and get this dopamine shot then interestingly in the game with level 10 you are able to get your your guild they they pumped up the experience needed after that so that you are able to play with other players and everything i like the xp table a lot because you can see if you played the game why they made certain decisions in the game 
at least I think these are those their intentions. If they really are or not, I don't know. I don't know anybody working there, but that's how I interpret this chart. I'm currently in the mid 30 levels in the game and leveling up from 25 to 30 was way harder. I, I didn't look at this table, I, I just played the game. But leveling up from 25 to 30 was way felt way harder for myself than 30 with to 35. And the, I was I found it very interesting that the curve actually explains that it was harder to level up with 25 to 30 than from 30 to 35. There there are other reasons, for example, like I said, this this table and curve on its own means nothing. So if you analyze a, a curve like this and you haven't played the game, it's just a bunch of numbers. But another thing happens at level 30, your main story quest uh, goes, beyond, goes further and you get a lot of XP in the game for that. So, But leveling up from, from 30 to 35 feels way easier than from 25 to 30. Then it pretty much was around its default value, which in this case, if you if you in Excel select everything at the very bottom, you can see the average and the average for this curve is 32. So then the, pretty much the late game is balanced default. They might change that, they might not. But that that's basically how I think a new world balanced the game. We, we analyzed another game, which was Final Fantasy XIV, but directly when you see this graph, you know, this is an exponential curve. I tried to do some analysis on on this curve, but, but it's pretty hard. It's not as straightforward because the last time I played Final Fantasy XIV is, was a long time ago, so uh, it's hard to relate now what how each level felt but it's an exponential curve and this i've analyzed more games and they are all pretty much exponentially increasing experience table and it actually makes sense if you think about it a little bit you want to have like i said before the early dopamine shots so it should be easy for the player to to get level ups and to get going with the game. Giving the player level ups, for example, let you pace the game what you want to introduce to the player, for example, in the new world example, which I gave. Level 10, you, you can have a guild. You can't have a guild for level 10 and a whole lot of things open up at level 10. But you want to prepare the player for that and First of all, you get into the game, you learn the combat system and after that, the, after you have mastered the combat system, you, you get introduced to gathering and, have, and crafting in the game. Crafting is a very important aspect of the game and then you got to choose your guild. So the first thing is basically playing, till level 10 is basically playing a tutorial of the game, how the game is played and how you get it best experience points and everything and then you get to play with, with your friends and you you can you explore that together and basically can do pvp and everything a whole lot of things open up and then with 25 you get to do your first dungeon and after that the, the game is fully opened up for you um, apart from uh, new dungeons and everything, but the game actually in its gameplay features is open up fully for the player. And then the XP curve go, goes back to, to its normal. So there, there's no need to balance that because the exponential curve will take care of the, that the player will take longer. Often uh, I didn't found uh, current numbers for that, but Often leveling as gaining experience from monsters and quests and everything is often a linear curve. So that it actually really takes longer. Not only do you need to for finishing a quest more monsters, 
but you also get way less experience because the curve is linear instead of an exponential curve. We can really fast uh, make a linear graph and map it onto it. Let's let's just do that. It's quite a simple. Write a one and a two. You select those two and then you drag it down. And we can select both, or we should be, and then we can draw both lines, and then you, you see what I mean. You can balance the, the linear curve, for example. You can multiply that with, with a certain value. Uh, let's do that in U, because that's easier. So I can do T1, let's multiply that with, for example, 50. It's just an arbitrary number which I um, picked. And let's drag that down. And let's actually take those two curves. And yeah, maybe 50 is too high, but, but you get the idea. You want to have a curve, maybe, which, which goes like that. It touches at the very bottom in the early levels, but it, it goes apart later and later. So maybe 25 uh, week. We should be able to do that. Yes. Something like that. If, if you do that, then early levels are easy because you get over experience from the part what you need. And later in the game, um, you you get way less experience than than you need, and it not only does a quest take more time, but the quest gives less. So you have to balance that, and you have to play test that. I, I know no person who who comes up with values like that and say and they're perfectly from the start even though though like i said you have to also balance that with what what you want the player to achieve fast and what you want to open them up maybe you want to slow them down so they they walk around a little bit more and have to do some some things like the dungeon for example in new world if if they they don't um slow you down there a lot of people would totally run the dungeon just once or ignore it and it's really hard for other players to to get a group together if the dungeon isn't worth it and slowing down the player helps with with pushing this idea to the player that maybe the dungeon is a good idea when you want to balance those values and you want to play test you actually need some starting values you you can't just uh, pump out some some numbers randomly in your game and it, from the start feels very bad so a good starting value for for xp needed to level up is an exponential curve and a good value for xp gaining for each level up quest and higher quest is a linear curve which tends to work out pretty well there, there are other things you you can do you can tinker around with with those with those values later. And that's what we do in the next video. We will actually play test our game and try to to get some level up progression in there. I'm really happy to to implement this feature for the next video and start get going. I think this will be a serious because leveling up XP table and everything implemented in the game might be too much for one video, but next thing in the game will be you will be able to get some level ups and maybe give give some stat points around and everything like that and then we will implement that also one thing which might increase experience gaining by a lot is for example let's say a player at level 20 gets for his first aoe skills and now he can kill five mobs at the same time where before that he just could have one after another and this means he gets five times the experience that's why you sometimes you want to have a bump in your curve and flatten it after that
Long story short, you always have to play test your game because it is hard to, to balance a game just by the numbers because sometimes it feels like something is worth nothing and doing another thing is worth a whole lot and you might want to balance that. And you also have to keep in mind that there are different players out there. There are players in New World which love gathering. They just do gathering. They don't do quests or anything. They just do gathering and crafting. And if this is a, a big part of the game, you want to have those players be able to play and enjoy your game. And they only enjoy your game if they get this dopamine shot. This is very important in game design. And you also want to have a player that does quests and actually in New World doing quests is way faster than doing gathering but it's by a margin of two so it's actually possible to level up pretty well in the game just doing gathering and I really like games like that who who offers different possibilities to to be sort of effective in the game because sometimes you might you you might want to do some quests and then you might want to have a downtime, a little more, a little bit more chill time. You want to do some gathering, and after that, you want to, you have a group together in in your guild, and you want to go pump up, kill some mobs in a dungeon, and have a little bit of challenge there, bigger challenge than just walking around and killing mobs outside the world, which usually is the case, and. This way you can control yourself how you want to play and you give the player options, which is a good idea. This is it for today. I really want to thank my Patreon Julian for helping me. Have a good day. Bye.